Hey guys, and welcome to another Ask Danielle. It's been a really long time since I did the other one, so I asked you guys on Snapchat and Instagram. I got way more feedback on Instagram, but I think I got two actual video questions from you guys, so I'm gonna start there. Hello, Johannes. I have a question for you. We both have been through a lot of a great question that was for my husband I'm gonna save that actually I'm gonna save that clip for a time where Johannes is around he's at work right now but ah too bad he's not here I really want to hear his answer to that question thank you so much for that okay ask Danielle you are so lovable are you planning on keeping the placenta after the birth watch the documentary where you hang on I want to see that again uh, it was a video, but it was like a video message. Will I keep my placenta? I am planning to, to keep my placenta this time. Um, I'm planning to encapsulate it myself, actually. And maybe with the help of a doula friend, I really want to give eating my placenta a try, but I'm not really thinking that smoothies is going to be my forte. So I am going to dry it up grind it up and encapsulate it and see if I receive the benefits from it. Okay, so I'm on Instagram now and the first question is from Holly Annabelle. After your past doula experiences with difficult hospital births, are you still considering midwifery as a career path? I actually am and I think I've started considering it even more since then. I think Working as a doula, I just feel like I don't have a lot of freedom or a lot of say, and it can sometimes be a little bit difficult to hold my tongue in difficult situations where I find the staff are being either really unfriendly to the woman or where I feel like they're just setting her up for failure. It can be really difficult to watch. So that's definitely inspired me to become a midwife and I do plan to work in the hospitals for a little while and um, hopefully make somewhat of a difference to some women having more positive hospital birth experiences, but I would like to move and branch out to home births after I gain some experience. This one is from the Charlotte Emily. She's one of my friends actually from the UK. So hello, Charlotte. Um, her question is, if there was a thing you wish you knew before having Olivia, what would it be? Oh man, there are so many things I wish I knew. Firstly, I wish that I would have done more breastfeeding research. Um, I did so much prepping for the birth, so much research for the birth, but the birth was relatively easy. And I guess it could be also because I did do so much research, but I did have sort of an idea and I did do some breastfeeding research, but it wasn't as much as I did for the birth. So we had a lot more problems with breastfeeding than anything else. So I really wish that I would have like looked up more about latching problems and how to solve that earlier. I also wish that I would have known more about the breast crawl, which is where you put the baby on your chest and you just kind of let it find the breast. Cause I feel like that's what Olivia kind of wanted to do now looking back on it. Like I think that the breast crawl gives babies some confidence. And I think that's what Olivia really needed in that journey because there was a lot of like, pressure to get her on the boob like probably about 20 minutes after she was born the midwife was ramming her on there one midwife was squeezing my boob and Olivia I think was just getting really stressed out because she could sense that I was stressed out too and I think that that just kind of set us up for a bad um way if you know what I mean so I would really, I really do want to try breast crawl with this baby. With Leia, she latched pretty easily with just me putting her on the breast. There was nobody else in the room. It was a lot more peaceful. So breastfeeding, um, I wish I would have known how little time I was gonna have and just like, you can't, nobody can really prepare you for how little sleep you get after having a newborn. Like it's crazy, it's actually weird how painful being tired is. Like you don't know how painful being tired is until you had a 
newborn baby, especially one who doesn't sleep a lot and who fusses a lot. <laughs> Next is by Riza Marie 07. Do you have a baby name picked out? We don't have a baby name picked out. We don't know what the sex of the baby is. Next is by Lee. Oh, <laughs> that's a weird name, but not like Leo. It's like Leo Lo or some. I don't know. It's weird. Spelled weird. L I O O L H H. Have you gained less weight in comparison with your first two pregnancies? You look great, by the way. Thank you, because I'm feeling still a little bit awkward in my clothes. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, so. Have I gained less weight? No, actually. And I don't think I gained like heaps amount of weight in the beginning of either of my pregnancies. Considering in the past I did put on weight pretty easily. I think I gained more weight postpartum in like the last couple weeks. But actually this pregnancy, I've lost the least amount of weight um, in all of my pregnancies. The first trimester with Olivia and Leia, I lost so much weight because there was so little I could eat. I did still lose weight this time. And I don't actually know how I am on weight gain, weight loss right now, but I'm pretty sure that it's not too much. I just know that I've lost about an inch off of my hips, which means I've probably lost some body fat. Next is by Leanne Frost. What will you be doing differently with this home birth? Also, what was your favorite? Also, what is your favorite vegan meal since you have been pregnant? Oh, what will I do differently? Water birth. I really want to have a water birth. I talked to my midwife about getting a birthing tub and I'm going to get in contact with that midwife who rents them out soon. And I'd really like to give water birth a go. I feel like in a big tub, I would feel not as confined as I did in like my bathtubs giving birth. Um, I feel like it'll give me more mobility. It will actually take some of that gravity off. So hopefully it will help me in the long run. Can't think of anything else I will be doing too differently. I'm debating, I mean, I'm going to have the birthing stool there because it worked really well for me in the past. But as a doula, I've learned a lot and some midwives don't even really like birthing stools because they think it doesn't actually open the pelvis up to its largest degree in comparison to actually squatting yourself or being on all fours. Those are like the best ways to open the pelvic diameters. And I have a really bad tailbone problem after Leia. After Livia, it was fine, but it actually makes a lot of sense now because Leia just came shooting out of me. And if you're on the birthing stool in a funny way, and the baby comes out particularly fast in a way that the midwife doesn't have time to correct your position, um, you your tailbone won't open out quite as much as it would if you were to be like in a natural squatting position or if you were to be on all fours. So I feel like my tailbone did get injured <laughs> during Leia's birth. So I want to have the birthing stool there and on hand, but I would like to give birth in the water either on all fours or like kind of leaning against the tub just to open my pelvis up more to keep from any more damage being done to my tailbone. And I, um, or I will try squatting in the water and taking the baby out on my own is a big deal to me <laughs> because I want to be a midwife and I feel like it would be kind of really nice to deliver my own baby. So I guess there's a lot that I want to do differently this time. Oh, and the other question was, what was my favorite? What's my favorite vegan meal? Um, my favorite, I don't know, cause it changes so much by the day. I don't really have a standard, but I do love myself some burrito bowls, but that's not really anything different. Next is Nom E2 Malati. Does your pregnancy now feel any different from the girls in terms of movement, cravings, etc.? Well, as you guys know, the biggest difference is been able to eat the whole pregnancy, not as much nausea. Um, I've had more hormonal acne, I would say. That's been one of the down points, which I keep forgetting to mention in pregnancy vlogs. And um, cravings, I actually crave really similar foods to Leia's pregnancy. And anything else? Movement. I don't find this baby to actually be that active anymore. At first I was thinking, oh, it's really active, but I think I was just feeling it really early. Um, so that kind of made me think it was going to become really active, but it's like nothing compared to the olive. Like the olive was like the 
gymnastics baby in there and she was like a turner and a flipper. It's still early days, but this baby gives me like some strong good nudges and enough of them, but it reminds me a lot more of Leia. Like it just reminds me of like, oh, there's like some action, but then there's peace. Next is another gender question. AJ Lincoln, do you or do you think you're having a boy or a girl? Um, so this is a good question. Like, what do I think? What's my intuition? So I didn't have like a thought about it for such a long time with Olivia. I had an instinct she was a girl probably like a week into the pregnancy. And I was so sure she was a girl. And so many people thought I was having a boy. It kind of like irritated me because I was like, it's not, <laughs> you know, I was just like, you're wrong <laughs> kind of situation. Um, <laughs> So I think that was another reason why I kind of found out because everybody was like, it's a boy, it's a boy, it's twins, it's a boy, it's twins. And I was like, it's a girl and it's not twins. So I wanted to kind of prove everybody that I'm having a girl and stop saying it's twins, please, because you're starting to give me a complex. With Leia, I thought she was a boy. I didn't really have a strong intuition, but I thought she was a boy. I think I just expected a boy to be honest, like, you know, it's just kind of like, I think everybody kind of does. When you have one, you expect the other, especially the next time around. Now this time I uh, never really had an intuition until about a week before I had that ultrasound where I told you guys that I felt like I saw something different than what I saw with my girls. And ever since that ultrasound and ever since like a week before, I guess you could say, I've started leaning more towards boy, but Overall, I feel like the energies are quite equally masculine feminine in this baby, but I do have a hint of a boy. Like this is based on intuition. This isn't really based on what I'm expecting because because the universe has its way of throwing us off. So this is just based on motherly intuition and a little bit on the ultrasound at not even 12 weeks. So not putting too much stock into it, but it's just a guess. Okay, next is from Juicy Jossie 90 What ages did you wean Olivia and Leia from breastfeeding? Is there something that you did or did they do it on their own? I'm still breastfeeding my two-year-old son. Um, so Olivia was breastfed for one and a half years and I kind of wanted to go to two years with her, but I just kind of had the feeling she was kind of done with it. Like we were only feeding like, well, actually we were feeding like maybe three times a day. She would have like a nap feed, but she just started getting really weird at the breast. Like I was pregnant also, so things started getting tender. Um, I was actually already halfway through my pregnancy, but things just were tender the whole time. So it wasn't really nice for me. So she just started getting really weird at the breast. There was bite marks on my boob every time or on my nipple every time after a feed because I don't think she was biting. It's just her teeth were starting to create dents and the way she was latching was just starting to get weird. So I started initiating that we stop and she didn't have any problem with it. I just got rid of the nap feed, got rid of the night feed and the morning feed and it was fine. With Leia, I breastfed her until she was a month under two. So just about two years old which is what's recommended by the health, World Health Organization. So I really wanted to breastfeed at least two years. So I'm happy we made it to that point, but Leia was just honestly done. Like she, she didn't want to do it anymore, so I wasn't gonna force her. All right, I think this is a good question to end on. This is by Shantair. Will this be your last baby? Oh, I don't know. That's a, that's a good question. Something tells me that it might. Um, I think it really depends on a lot of factors, like the temperament of the baby, um, just a lot of things. I, like I said, I would really like to become a midwife and the education process here is about three years. And um, I feel like, you know, I'll have this baby when I'm 28 and probably by the time I'm 30, 31, I feel like my, I'll be really confident in studying in German and I should be able to pass like a test in terms of see if my German is good enough to study. And then I will start my Ausbildung is what you call it here. Now that's like plan A, if, I, if this is going to be the last one. Plan B is if I still feel like there's another one, I'd like them to be not super far apart, but not as close as Olivia and Leia. So I'll either start doing my midwifery thing in the next three years to six years. <laughs> we'll just have to see how it goes. 
I don't know. So, all right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.